artificial intelligence, the words are full of possibility. Yet to many, it may seem complex, expensive, and hard to know where to get started. How do you make AI real for your business? At Dell Technologies, we see AI enhancing business, enriching lives, and improving the world. Dell Technologies is dedicated to making AI easy, so more people can use it to make a real difference. So you can adopt and run AI anywhere with your current skill sets. With AI solutions powered by PowerEdge servers and made portable across hybrid multi-clouds with VMware. Plus, solve I.O. bottlenecks with breakthrough performance delivered by Dell EMC Ready Solutions for HPC storage and data accelerator. And enjoy automated, effortless management with Open Manage Systems Management so you can keep business insights flowing across a multi-cloud environment. With an AI portfolio that spans from workstations to supercomputers, Dell Technologies can help you get started with AI easily and grow seamlessly. AI has the potential to profoundly change our lives. With Dell Technologies, AI is easy to adopt, easy to manage, and easy to scale. And there's nothing artificial about that. From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and welcome to this special launch with our friends at Dell Technologies. I'm going to be talking about AI and the reality of making artificial intelligence real. Happy to welcome to the program uh, two of our Cube alumni, Ravi Pendicanti, he's the Senior Vice President of Server Product Management, and Kiri Pellegrino, uh, Vice President of Data-Centric Workloads and Solutions in High-Performance Computing, both with Dell Technologies. Thank you both for joining. Thanks, Stu, Thanks for having me. So, you know, as, as the industry, we watch, uh, you know, the AI has been this huge buzzword, but one of the things I, I've actually liked about one of the differences about what I see when I, I, I listen to the vendor community talking about AI versus what I saw too much in the big data world is you know it used to be you know oh there was the opportunity and data is so important and yes that's real but it was it was a very wonky conversation and the promise and the translation of what this meant to the real world didn't necessarily always connect and we saw many of the big data solutions uh, you know failed over time with AI uh, and and I've I've seen this in, in meetings from Dell who we talking about you know those business outcomes in general overall in IT but you know how AI is helping make things real so maybe we can start there. Uh, for, I know there's some product announcements and, and things we're going to get into, but Ravi and Thierry, talk to us a little bit about you know, the customers that you've been seeing and the impact uh, that AI is having on their businesses. Sure, Stu, uh, I'll, I'll take a, a, a shot at it. Uh, a couple of things, for example, if you start looking at uh, you know, the autonomous vehicles industry or the manufacturing industry where uh, people are looking at building better tools uh, for uh, anything they need to do on their manufacturing floor, for example. Uh, this is a good example of where, with autonomous vehicles and stuff, you've got Zenuti, that's actually a World War company, uh, which is using uh, our uh, whole product suite, right from the hardware and the software, to do multiple uh, iterations of ensuring that the software and the hardware come together pretty seamlessly, and more importantly, ingesting you know, probably tens of petabytes of data to ensure that we've got the right uh, training algorithms in place. Uh, so that's a great example of how we are helping some of our customers today in ensuring that we can really make this real in terms of moving away from just a modeling scenario to something that customers are able to use right today. Yeah, and if I can add one more, um, uh, ENI, uh, one of our, I will call them more partners than just customers in Italy, uh, in the en energy uh, sector, uh, they've been uh, they've been really really driving innovation with us. Um, we we just deployed a pretty large eight thousand uh, uh, accelerator cluster with them, which is the uh, the largest uh, commercial cluster uh, in the world. And what they're focusing on is the digital transformation and the development of energy sources. And it's really important in our day and age, you know, the, the, the planet's not getting younger and uh, 
we have to be really careful about the type of energies that uh, we utilize to uh, do what we do every day. Uh, and they've, they've put a lot of innovation. Uh, we've helped uh, set up the right solution for them. Um, and uh, we'll talk some more about what they've done with that cluster later during our chat. But uh, it is one of the examples that is tangible with a deployment that is being put to good use to help with AI. Great. Well, I'd love starting with some of the customer stories. Uh, I'm really glad we're going to be able to share some of those, uh, you know, actual hear from some of the customers a little bit later uh, in this launch. Uh, but Ravi, you know, maybe give us a little bit as to what you're hearing from customers, you know, the overall climate in AI, uh, you know, obviously, you know, so many challenges facing, uh, you know, people today, but, you know, specifically around AI, you know, what are some of the hurdles uh, that they might need to overcome uh, to be able to make AI real? I think the two important pieces uh, I can share, Stu. Number one, as much as we talk about AI uh, machine learning, uh, one of the biggest challenges that customers have today is ensuring that they have the right uh, amount and the right quality of data to go ahead and do the analytics per se. Because if you don't do it, it's gig or garbage in, garbage out. So the one of the biggest challenges our customers have today is ensuring that they have the most pristine data to go work on, and that takes quite a bit of an effort. Number two, uh, a lot of times, uh, I think one of the challenges they also have is having the right skill set to go out and have the uh, execution phase of the AI part uh, you know, worked on. And I think those are the two big challenges we hear of, and that doesn't seem to be changing in the very near term, uh, given the very fact that uh, and I think Forbes recently had an article that said that less than 15% of our customers probably are using AI machine learning today. So that talks to the challenges and the opportunity ahead, if I may. All right, so Ravi, give us the news. Tell us the, the updates from Dell Technologies, how, how you're helping customers with AI today. Uh, going back to one of the challenges, as I mentioned, uh, which is you know, not having the right skill set. One of the things we are doing uh, at Dell Technologies is making sure that we provide them not just the products, but also the ready solutions that we are working with. For example, Tier and his team, we're also working on validated configs or called reference architectures. The whole idea behind this is we want to take the guesswork out for our customers and actually go ahead and prescribe things that we have already tested to ensure that the integration is right there's the right sizing attribute. So they'll know exactly the kind of a product they have to pick up and not worry about making time and the resources needed to get to that particular location. So those are probably the two of the biggest things we are doing to help our customers make the right decision and execute seamlessly and on time. Excellent. So Thierry, uh, maybe give us a little bit of a broader look as to you know Dell's participation in, in, in the overall ecosystem uh, when it comes to uh, what's happening in AI uh, and you know why is this a unique time uh, for, for, for what's happening in the, in the industry yeah I mean Stu I think we, we all live it I mean I'm, I'm right here in my home and uh, I'm trying to ensure that uh, business continues to operate and it's important to make sure that uh, we're also there for our, our customers right? Um, the, the the fight against COVID-19 is uh, is changing what's happening around uh, the quarantines, etc. Um, so Dell, as a participant, not only in the AI um, world that, that we live in uh, and enabling AI, is also a participant in a lot of the communities. Uh, so we've recently joined the COVID-19 High Performance Computing Consortium. Uh, and we've also made uh, a lot of resources available to researchers and uh, scientists leveraging AI in order to make progress towards a cure and potentially the vaccine uh, against COVID-19. Uh, examples are, we, we have our own supercomputers uh, in the lab uh, here in Austin, Texas, and we've given access to uh, some of our partners. TGen is one example. Uh, at the beginning of our chat, I mentioned ENI. Um, so not only did they have barely deployed the, the cluster with us uh, earlier this year that uh, the COVID-19 started hitting, so uh, they've done what's the right thing to do for the community and humanity is uh, they've made the resource available to scientists in Europe. Uh, and TAC, uh, just down the road here, which had the, the largest uh, academic supercomputer that we deployed with them too, uh, is doing exactly the same thing. So this is one of the real uh, examples that 
are very timely and it's, it's, it's happening right now and we hadn't planned for it, uh, but we're there with our customers. Uh, the, the other piece is this is probably going to be a trend, but uh, healthcare uh, is going through an explosion of data. Ravi mentioned it at the beginning. You're talking about 2.3 thousand exabytes, uh, about 3,000 times the content of the Library of Congress. It's, it's incredible. And that data is useless. Uh, I mean, it's great. We can, we can put that on, on our great ISIL on storage. But uh, you can also see it as an opportunity to get business value out of it. Uh, and that's going to require a lot more resources uh, with AI. So a lot happening here that's, that's real. Uh, and if I can get into more of the science of it, uh, because it's healthcare, because it's the industry, we see now that our, our family members at VMware, part of the Dell Technologies portfolio, are getting even more relevance in the discussion. Uh, the industry is, is based on virtualization and, and VMware is the number one virtualization uh, solution for the industry. Um, so now we're, we're trying to weave in the uh, reality in the IT environment with the needs of AI and data science and HPC. Um, so you, you will see VMware uh, just added the Kubernetes uh, control plane to this sphere. Uh, and uh, we're leveraging that to have a very flexible environment where on one side we can do some data science, on the other side we can go back to running some enterprise class hardware, uh, class software on top of it. Uh, so, so all this is, is great and we're capitalizing on it with uh, validated solutions, validated design, uh, and I think that's going to be uh, adding a lot of uh, uh, power in the hands of our customers and, and all this based on their feedback and their asks back to us. If yeah, I may add to, just to build yeah. on that, interesting comment that uh, Thierry made on, we are actually looking at, uh, you know, very shortly we'll be talking about how we're going to have the ability to, for example, preload vSphere on all our servers. Again, that essentially means that we're going to cut down the time that our customers need to go ahead and deploy uh, on their sites. Yeah, uh, excellent. Definitely been, you know, very strong feedback from the community. Uh, we, we did a bunch of videos uh, around some of the vSphere 7 launch. Uh, you know, Thierry, uh, you know, we, we actually had done an interview with you uh, a while back uh, at your big lab. Uh, Jeff Frick got to uh, see the yep. supercomputers behind what you were doing. Maybe bring us in a little bit inside uh, as to, you know, some of the new pieces uh, that help enable AI. It's, you know, it, it often gets lost on the industry. You know, it's like, oh yeah, well, we've got the best hardware to accelerate or enable these kind of workloads. So, you know, bring us in as to what, you know, the engineering solution sets uh, that, that are helping to uh, make this a reality today. Yeah, and, and uh, truly, Stu, you've been there, you've seen the engineers in the lab, and uh, that, that's more than AI being real, that, that is double real, because uh, we spend a lot of time uh, analyzing workloads, customer needs. Uh, we have a, a lot of uh, PhD uh, engineers in there. And what we're working on right now is kind of the next wave of AI HPC enablement. Uh, as, as we all know, the consumption model or the way that uh, we want to have access to resources is evolving from uh, something that is uh, directly in front of us, uh, the one-to-one -one ratio, uh, to when virtualization became more prevalent, we had a one-to-many ratio. Uh, and GPUs hi historically have been allocated on a per user, or sometimes it is slightly modified view to have more than one user per GPU. But uh, with the uh, addition of uh, bit fusion, um, to the VMware portfolio, and BitFusion now being part of vSphere, we're building up uh, GPU as a service solutions uh, through a VMware validated design that we are launching. Uh, and that's going to give more flexibility. And the key here is flexibility. Uh, we have the ability, uh, as you know, with the VMware environment, to bring in also some uh, security, some uh, flexibility through moving the workloads, and uh, let's be honest, with some ties into uh, cloud models. Uh, and we have our own set of partners. Uh, we all know the, the, the big players in the industry too. Um, but that, that's all about flexibility and giving uh, our customers what they need and what they expect in the world that we're living today. Yeah, uh, Robbie, I guess that, that brings us to, uh, you know, one of the key pieces we need to look at here is how do we manage uh, across all of these environments? Uh, and, you know, how, do, how does AI, uh, fit into this whole discussion between what Dell and VMware are doing, things like vSphere, uh, you know, pu pulling in new workloads. Stu, actually, there are a couple of things. So there is really nothing artificial about the real intelligence that comes through with all the artificial intelligence we're working on. And so one of the crucial things 
I think we need to, you know, ensure that we talk about is it's not just about the fact that it's a product over here or a, or a storage there, but I think the crucial thing is we are looking at it from an end-to-end -end perspective, from everything from ensuring that we have the right workstations to support, right servers, the storage, making sure that it's well protected, and all the way through working with an ecosystem of software vendors. So first and foremost, that's the whole integration piece, making sure there is a right ecosystem. But more importantly, it's also ensuring that we help our customers by taking the guesswork out. Uh, again, I can't but emphasize the fact that there are customers who are looking at different uh, areas of entry. For example, somebody may be looking at an FPGA, somebody might be looking at GPUs. Uh, FPGAs probably, as you know, are great because their uh, price points and the thermal, or should I say the power needs are a lot lesser than the GPUs, but on the flip side, there's a need for them to have a set of folks who can actually program, right? It is why it's called the, you know, uh, progr programmable gate arrays of SATs, right? Feel programmable. My point being in all this, it's important that we actually provide the right end-to-end -end perspective, making sure that we are able to show the integration, show the value, and also provide the options because it's really not a cookie cutter approach of where you can take a particular solution and think that it'll fit the needs of every single customer. It doesn't even happen in the same industry for that matter. So the flexibility that we provide all the way through the services is truly our attempt at Dell Technologies to get the entire gamut of solutions available for the customer to go out and pick and choose what serves their needs the best. All right, well, Ravi and Thierry, thank you so much for the update. Uh, we're gonna turn it over to actually hear from some of your customers talk about the power of AI, uh, hear from their viewpoint, uh, how real uh, these solutions are becoming. Uh, love the play on words there about, you know, uh, enabling real artificial intelligence. Thanks so much for joining after the customers. Uh, looking forward to the, the VMware discussion. We want to put robots into the world's dullest, deadliest, and dirtiest jobs. We think that if we can have machines doing the work that put people at risk, then we can allow people to do better work. Dell Technologies is the foundation for a lot of the work that we've done here. Every single piece of software that we develop is simulated dozens or hundreds or thousands of times, and having reliable compute infrastructure is critical for this. A lot of technology has matured to actually do something really useful that can be used by non-experts. We try to predict when system fails. We try to predict the illness in patients, things into images. At the end of the day, it's that now we have machines that learn how to speak a language from, from zero. Everything we do really at Epsilon is centered around data and our ability to get the right message to the right person at the right time. We apply machine learning and artificial intelligence so in real time you can adjust those campaigns to ensure that you're getting the most optimized message. Zenity is a joint venture between Volvo Cars and Vionair. Our pure focus is automated driving and advanced driver assistance systems. Zenuit is really based on safety and how we can actually make lives better. Where you typically get bored and distracted in a car, if we can take those kind of situations away, it will bring the accidents down about 70 to 80 percent. So what I appreciate uh, with Dell Technologies is the overall solution that they have delivered to us. Being able to deliver the full package, uh, that has been a major differentiator compared to your competitors. All right, welcome back. To help us dig into this discussion, happy to welcome to the program Chris Rasad. He's the Senior Vice President and General Manager of the vSphere business, and Josh Simon, Chief Technologist for the High Performance Computing Group, both of them with VMware. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for having us. All right, Chris, when VMware made the BitFusion acquisition, everybody was looking to see you know, what this will do for the space. Of course, we're, we're talking GPUs, we're talking about uh, things like AI and ML. So uh, bring us up to speed as to, you know, the news uh, today is to what uh, VMware is doing with the BitFusion technology. 
Yeah, today we have a big announcement. I'm excited to announce that, uh, you know, we are taking the next big step in, the, uh, in our AI ML and modern application strategy with the launch of uh, Bitfusion, uh, which has now been fully integrated with the uh, vSphere 7 platform. And we'll be uh, releasing this uh, very shortly to the market. Uh, as you said, when we acquired uh, Bitfusion a year ago, we had uh, showcased its capabilities as part of the VMworld event. And at that time, we laid out a strategy that talked about Bitfusion as the cornerstone of our uh, capabilities in the platform in the AI ML space. Since then, we have had uh, many customers um, take a look at the technology, and we have had feedback from them, as well as from partners and analysts, and the feedback has been tremendous. Excellent. Well, Chris, what, what does this then mean for, for customers? You know, what, what's this value proposition that Bitfusion brings to uh, vSphere 7? Yeah, if you look at our uh, customers, uh, they are in the midst of a big uh, a journey in digital transformation. And basically what that means is customers are uh, building a ton of applications, and most of those applications have uh, some kind of data analytics or machine learning embedded in it. And what this is uh, uh, doing is that in the hardware and infrastructure industry, this is driving a lot of innovation. Uh, so you see the advent of a lot of uh, specialized uh, accelerators, um, custom ASICs, FPGAs, and of course, uh, GPUs uh, being uh, used to accelerate the, the special algorithms that these uh, um, AI ML type applications need. And um, unfortunately, customers run most of these uh, specialized art accelerators uh, in a um, uh, bare metal kind of setup. So they are not taking advantage of uh, virtualization and everything that it brings with it. Uh, so with Bitfusion launch today, we are essentially doing to the accelerator space what we did to compute several years ago. And uh, that is um, essentially bringing virtualization uh, to the accelerators but we take it one step further, which is, you know, we give the customers uh, the ability to pull these accelerators and uh, essentially kind of decouple it from the server. So you can have a pool of these accelerators sitting in the network and customers are able to then target their workloads and share the accelerators, get better utilization, drive a lot of cost improvements, and uh, in essence, have a smaller pool that they can use for a whole bunch of uh, different applications across the enterprise. So it's a huge uh, improvement for customers, and uh, that's the, the, the tremendous positive feedback that we have been get, getting both from customers as well as our partners. Excellent, well, I'm glad we've got Josh here to dig into some of the pieces. Before we get to you though, Josh, Krish, uh, part of this announcement is the partnership of VMware and Dell, so uh, tell us about uh, what the partnership is and, and the solutions for, for this launch. Yeah, we have been working with uh, Dell in the, in the AI and ML space for a long time. We have a good partnership there. This just uh, takes the partnership to the next level and uh, we will have uh, Bitfusion solution support in some of the key AI ML targeted uh, Dell servers like the C4140 and the R740. Uh, th those are the servers that uh, we will be uh, partnering with them on and providing solutions on top of. Excellent. Uh, so, Josh, you know we we've watched for you know a long time. You know various technologies. Oh, it's not a fit for you know virtualized environment, and then you know VMware does does what it does. Make sure you know performance is there. It makes sure all the options are there. Bring us inside a little bit. You know what this solution means for leveraging uh, GPUs. Yeah, so uh, actually before I before I s answer that question, let me say that the the Bitfusion acquisition and the Bitfusion technology fits into a larger strategy at VMware uh, around AI and ML that I think m matches pretty nicely to the overall uh, Dell uh, strategy as well in, in the sense that we are really focused on delivering AI ML capabilities 
or the ability for our customers to run their AM, AI and ML workloads from edge to core to cloud. And that means running it on CPU or running it on uh, hardware accelerators like, um, like GPUs, uh, whatever is really required by the customer. In this specific case, we're quite excited about the Fusion technology because it really allows us, as Chris was describing, to extend our capabilities, especially in the deep learning space where GPU accelerators are critically important. And so what this technology really brings to the table is the ability to, uh, as Chris was outlining, to pool those resources, those hardware resources together, and then allow uh, organizations to drive up the utilization of those GPU resources uh, through that pooling and also uh, increase the degree of sharing that we support, that, that's supported for the customer. Okay, Josh, take us in a little bit further as to how you know, the, the, the mechanisms of BitFusion work. Sure, yeah, that's a great question. So uh, think of it this way, there, there is a client component to BitFusion and a server component. The server component is running on a machine that actually has the physical GPUs installed in it. The client machine, which is running the BitFusion client software, is where the user, the data scientist, is actually running their machine machine learning application. So there's no GPU actually in that host. And what is happening with the BitFusion technology is that it is essentially uh, intercepting the CUDA calls that are being made by that machine learning application and remoting those CUDA calls over to the BitFusion server and then injecting them into the local GPU on the server. So uh, it's, it's actually, you know, we, we call it interposition and the ability to remote these uh, uh, CUDA calls, but it's actually much more sophisticated than that. Uh, th there are a lot of underlying capabilities that are being uh, deployed in terms of optimizations to take maximum advantage of the uh, the networking link that sits between the client machine and the server machine. But given all of that, once we've done it, uh, with BitFusion, it's now possible for the data scientists to either consume multiple GPUs or single GPUs or even fractional GPUs. Uh, across that interconnect using the BitFusion technology. Okay, maybe, maybe it would help illustrate uh, so some of these uh, technologies if you've got a couple of customers. Uh, sure, so uh, one example would be a retail customer I'm thinking of uh, who is uh, actually, a, it's a, a grocery chain uh, that is deploying uh, a large number of uh, video cameras into their, into their stores uh, in order to do things like um, watch for pilfering, uh, identify when store, sh uh, store shelves could be restocked, and even looking for cases where, for example, maybe a customer has fallen down in an aisle uh, and someone needs to go uh, and help them. Uh, those multiple video streams and the multiple applications that are being run uh, that are, are um, consuming the data from those video streams and doing analytics and ML on them would be perfectly suited for this type of environment where you would like to be able to have uh, these multiple independent applications running, but having them be able to efficiently share uh, the hardware resources of the GPUs. Uh, another example would be uh, retailers who are deploying ML-powered checkout registers to help reduce uh, fraud uh, by customers who are uh, buying, uh, uh, buying things with uh, uh, fake barcodes, for example. So in that case, you would not necessarily want to deploy uh, a single dedicated GPU for every single checkout line. Instead, what you would prefer to do is have a pooled set of resources that each uh, uh, inference operation that's occurring within each one of those um, uh, checkout lines could then consume collectively. And that would be two examples of the use of this kind of pooling technology. Okay, great. So Josh, uh, last question for you. Is, is this technology, is this only for GPUs and Anything else you can give us a little bit of a look forward to as to what we should be expecting uh, for, from the BitFusion technology? Sure, yeah. So currently, uh, the target is specifically NVIDIA GPUs with CUDA. Uh, the team, uh, actually even prior to acquisition, uh, had done some work on enablement of FPGAs and also uh, had done some work on OpenCL, which is a more open standard for uh, device access. So what you will see over time is an expansion of the BitFusion capabilities to embrace devices like FPGAs. Uh, the domain-specific uh, ASICs that Chris was referring to earlier uh, will roll out over time, but we are starting 
uh, with the uh, NVIDIA GPU, which totally makes sense since that is the, the primary hardware acceleration engine uh, for deep learning currently. Excellent. Well, Josh and Chris, thank you so much for the updates. Uh, to the audience, if you're watching this live, please join the crowd chat now. It's time to ask your questions and participate. If you're watching this on demand, you can also go to crowdchat.net slash make AI real to be able to see the conversation that we had. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Managing your data center requires around the clock attention. Dell EMC Open Manage Mobile enables IT administrators to monitor data center issues and respond rapidly to unexpected events anytime, anywhere. Open Manage Mobile provides a wealth of features within a comprehensive user interface, including server configuration, push notifications, remote desktop, augmented reality, and more. The latest release features an updated AR interface, power and thermal policy review, emergency power reduction, and internal storage monitoring. Download OpenManage Mobile today.